Well, what a glorious day it is at First Congregational Church of Los Angeles. Thank you to all of our guests for sharing in this very special day. Thank you to all the staff and congregational leaders who have worked so hard for this day. And thank you to the members and friends of our church. You truly make a difference every single week in the life of our congregation. Now, even though this is a momentous day in the life of our church and city, I'm remembering that quote by G.K. Chesterton who said, angels can fly because they take themselves lightly. And so I celebrate the joy and laughter and faces of young people in our congregation today, and I too want to offer my congratulations to the graduating class of Pilgrim School. We are so proud of you. Sure, one more time. Oh, how the world has changed over the last 150 years. That's true for this great city of Los Angeles, a city that is constantly morphing and changing and becoming something new, but it's also true for churches all around the country. There was a time when churches were at the center of American culture. Generations of families attended those churches, and they didn't just attend every now and then. They attended week after week, and they served on committees, and they taught Sunday school classes, and they gave of their financial resources, and they built buildings like this, a beautiful Gothic cathedral that was built during the Great Depression. And they started institutions like hospitals and schools, like our wonderful Pilgrim School. None of it was an accident. It happened because people of faith believed that a church could make a difference in the life of a city. And here we are now on our 150th anniversary, and while we celebrate our history today, I am really here to point us toward our future. Churches are no longer at the center of American cultural life. That is a huge change, but frankly, it is a change that is just fine with me because that means we now have to work really hard for our relevance in the lives of people. In the earliest days of the church, a day that we especially remember on Pentecost Sunday, the church was on the margins of the Roman Empire, and yet it grew, and it multiplied, and it made a difference in the world. And that's why we are here today. That's why we will be here tomorrow. We are here to make a difference in the lives of people. Over the past decade, two major forces have shaped America's religious landscape when it comes to churches. The first is the rise of more conservative, evangelical-type churches. These churches tend to interpret the Bible in a more literal way, a narrow way, and they really offer an answer-oriented faith to the world. Many of these communities are megachurches, often built around the personality of a charismatic leader. And while I want to respect religious beliefs of others, I also have to say that in many ways, the religious right has slowly co-opted Christian faith in America, to the point that to be Christian in the minds of many people has come to mean anti-intellectual or philosophically soft. Or to be Christian has come to mean being intolerant to the world's religions or intolerant to people of different sexual orientations or even demeaning of women. Or to be Christian has come to mean being anti-science, anti-evolution, in fact, anti-all the social sciences in our universities today. But here we are, a church celebrating its 150th anniversary. And it seems to me that now is our time to stand up. And we are here to say that there is another way of being a Christian. That's why we're here now. We're not just here to keep this building standing. We're not just here to keep the organ playing. We are not just here to keep the lights on. We are here to make a difference in our city, and we are here to say to people who have been burned by religion, 
who have been shamed by religion in the name of God, who have been hurt by communities of faith because of injustice. We are here to say to them that you can bring your head and you can bring your heart into this congregation every Sunday morning. And you can bring your differences into our church every Sunday morning. And you can bring your deepest questions about life to your church. That's why we are here. In many ways, our church is an alternative. We're here to say that there's a way to be a Christian and still believe in science and evolution and academic research. There's a way to be a Christian and still love gay people and straight people and transgendered people. There's a way to be a Christian and still respect Muslims and Jews and Buddhists and Hindus. There's a way to be a Christian and still love the immigrants and the refugees of our world. And there's a way to be a Christian and believe, really believe. Mr. President, really believe <laughs> that climate change is the great moral issue of our time. <laughs> but we're also here as another kind of alternative. It is that alternative to secularism of our age. I don't mean secularism as science or reason. I'm talking about that view of life that suggests the only reality in our human experience is the reality that we can scientifically prove or empirically demonstrate. We are here to say that there is more to life than meets the eye. After he passed away several years ago, the great French theologian and scientist, Teilhard de Chardin wrote a note on a scrap of paper, and someone found it on his desk after he died, and it read, there is something afoot in the universe. Or as Shakespeare said, there are more things in heaven and earth than what we even dreamed. Look, I know that God is not some literal being up on a throne, up in a sky. I know that God is not sending down lightning bolts or causing car wrecks or afflicting people with diseases. Of course not. God, that word God, points us to the depths of our human experience. God is mystery. God is poetry. God is art and music. And beauty, God, is that feeling we have when we look into the eyes of another person. And not only do we see them, we begin to discover ourselves. God is that feeling we have when we've made a mistake and someone has the grace to forgive us. God is that feeling we have when we see the sparkling Pacific Ocean or the Sierra Mountains in California soaring up into the sky, and for a minute, a brief and wondrous minute, we feel at home in the universe. That's God. And God is that presence that rises to the surface inside our dark and lonely hearts, and it speaks to us. It's okay. Take a breath. I love you just the way you are. That is the God of the Christian faith, and that's what we offer to the city of Los Angeles. Now, I know I cannot prove any of that, but I also know within my experience that God, defined in that way, is the deepest truth of all and so we try to keep a light on in our church, and we are here to say to the city of Los Angeles that there's more to life than the literal, simplistic, narrow, judgmental, shaming Christianity. And it's also why we try to say there's more to life than just a career or making money or surviving Los Angeles traffic. Between the emptiness of secularism and the sip simplistic answers of right-wing religion. There is another way, and we're trying to live it here. 
and we're trying to share it here. It is our purpose. Now, I want to try to pull all of this together this morning by noting that there are really two big anniversaries that we're celebrating this week. This morning is all about First Church 150, but this past week was the 50th anniversary of the Beatles releasing Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band album. Now, I've been thinking, is there some way that these two anniversaries connect with one another? So on the album, there's the song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, and it offers a visionary view of life, if not a mind-altering understanding <laughs> of divine consciousness and inner spiritual renewal, even as we picture ourselves in a boat on a river with tangerine trees and marmalade skies. I like that. I can dig that. I also thought about that song, just maybe getting better could be the mantra of hope for our city and church. It says you have to admit it's getting better, a little better all the time. I like that too. There's a mystical song on that album that says, within you, without you. And it says we were talking about love the love we all could share. When we find it, we try our best to hold it there. With our love, with our love, we could save the world. Now that's groovy. <laughs> and it sounds a lot like Jesus too. But there's another song, and I love it, and it's titled, With a Little Help from My Friends. And it's really how a church holds together. With a little help from friends. It's how a senior class holds together with a little help from friends. It's how families hold on together with a little help from our friends. And so I wonder this morning, what would you think if, if I sang out of tune? <laughs> would you stand up and walk out on me? <laughs> Lend me your ear and I'll preach you a sermon, <laughs> and I'll try not to preach out of key. Oh, I get by with Happy birthday, First Church.